So to start off, uh, the picture that is shown here is honorary degree, um, which is from 1938. Um, and this one in particular shows Grant Wood in the center getting his honorary degree from, from two of his colleagues. And hold on a second. There we go. Um, so the story of the, the 19 lithographs is they were printed by Associated American Artists out of New York. Um, and these were done from starting in 1937 with tree, excuse me, tree planting group was the first one. And the very last one of the 19 was a family doctor, which is printed in 1941, shortly before the artist had passed away in 1942. There are 19 in all. 15 of these are printed in black um, on, on cream colored paper or white paper. And then there are four hand colored ones that um, he actually had his sister Nan and her husband do the hand coloring on. All of these were editions of 250, with the exception of Family Doctor, which is actually commissioned by Abbott Laboratories and was an edition of 300. So that's the only one that was of a larger edition than the other ones. There's also the infamous Sultry Night print, which depicted a nude farmhand taking a bath using uh, water from a horse trow. And I've got a picture of that here real quick, a little risque. But um, that's the particular one. This particular one has um, was considered by the US Postal Service as pornographic, and it was prevented from the publisher to be mailed out like they mailed out the other ones. So um, it couldn't even be in the gallery's catalog because of the picture that, that it was. So because of that, um, not as many of this edition went out. So there's actually probably, they estimate maybe only 100 remains. So that's the most rare of the Grantwood lithographs. And then the four hand colored ones are fruits, vegetables, tame flowers, and wildflowers. And those are ones hand colored by his sister, Nan. And I've got an example of one of those. Uh, so this one here is fruits. So that's one of the ones, um, that's one of the four colored ones. And move the slide forward. There we go, went too far. So um, what is a stone lithograph? So there's a, um, when people talk, talk about prints, there's, um, there's stone lithographs, there's regular lithographs, there's offset lithographs. So it can be really confusing as to what the, the prints are. So um, stone lithographs was developed in uh, 1798 in Germany, and it uses a grease or a wax crayon or like a touche wash um, on an image created on Bavarian limestone. I mean, these days, historically it's Bavarian limestone, but these days they may use other mediums, metal and such. And after the drawing is complete, there's a series of chemical processes used um, to create a hydrophobic, which means oil and water, oil attracting, water repelling, um, to um, get the grease and the, the image to, uh, to stick to the stone. It can be then printed, inked for printing, and the stone is run through a press. Now with these, there are no plate marks as you would see with intaglio prints or engraving that are onto metal plates. And so when you're looking for these, they don't have the indentation of the plates. Uh, and the stone lithography doesn't wear out like the copper plates in the intaglio printmaking process or the engravings. And so the printing, if they're inked consistently, they should be more consistent. Um, but historically, they've always limited the size of these editions to you know 250, so there's not too many of them printed. And at this particular time, these, these images were signed, but the, the, they weren't numbered in the way that you see them today. So today you would see a number of like, say two of 200. Um, these don't have any numbering system on them. So when you're looking for the reproduction prints, so many of these reproduction ones are taken from the Thomas Craven's American Treasury of Prints. I have a half and have a book of that here and Pop open to one of them. For instance, um, January is printed in here. And so you can see that it will have, you know, a lot of times it'll have the binding in there, it'll be ripped from the binding, and often it will have the print information on the back of the piece. So these were done in the late 1930s, uh, published in 39, they're smaller editions than the other ones. And the, these, these particular ones will have the words repro typed in the lower left corner. And then um, Grant Wood's signature will be 
printed, not like a graphite signature. And when you're looking at also at some of the reproductions, the later ones um, after, you know, at this point in time and later into the 60s and up until like the 80s and 90s, they'll have a dot matrix pattern. So when we're looking for how to identify them, we'll look through a magnifying glass to find a dot matrix, the dot matrix pattern on there to determine if it's a, an original lithograph or if it's a reproduction. Um, there's even like in the 60s, I think believe WT sent out a number of these as part of like a advertising and wall calendars. So we'll come across some of those, but largely the reproduction ones we see are the ones from the American Treasury of Prints. Um, the more recent ones that are out there are a digital print. Um, and so they're not going to have the dot matrix pattern, um, but the paper are going to look too new. So we're, when we're looking at the other ones, um, we're looking for like the the, how the paper looks uh, compared to like the newer ones and kind of trying to determine um, which one's the reproduction, which is real. So one of the things that we look for is, you know, we get lots of calls saying, well, I found this piece in grandma's attic. Um, I found something in an estate sale. I bought something on eBay. I have this in the family. I don't know what it is. And so we'll, um, usually have the client come in and bring the piece in so we can take it out of the matting and framing. That's usually the best indication to see what the margins look like. We can measure then, you know, um, the print size to compare with known sizes of the known authentic prints. Um, we'll look at it under magnifying glasses. Um, I have a few examples here, like just a basic magnifying glass. We'll use, you know, a loop, like a jeweler's loop. This one here is a nice one. It kind of lights up so we can see things better. This one's even fancy. It has a black light in there too. Um, we've got, you know, other print magnifying glasses. Any of those types of things will help us see to see if there's a dot matrix pattern or if it's going to be, if it's going to be a real lithograph. And if you're buying something from eBay or, you know, an estate sale or from someone else, it's always good to ask the history of the print to see if they know um, if it came through the family, if it has a good provenance. Um, or if they know just a little bit more about it, sometimes it helps eliminate some of the, the questions. So I happen to have an example of a real lithograph handy as well as a reproduction one. But let me run through a couple of the things um, and what we look for when we're looking for the, you know, the stone lithograph. So the original lithographs were printed with full margins. Um, and so they will have a deckled edge to them. It'll be more of a subtle deckled edge. And the print margins are centered, but they're not always um, equidistant. As you can see in the image here, there's a little bit less space at the top as there is on the sides. The signature is almost always in the lower right-hand corner with Grant Wood. And it's a pencil signature, so we look for the graphite. If it's something that is printed, we know that it's not going to be an authentic one. Um, like I said before, there's no plate marks like an Italian printing or an engraving. So because it'll, the image will go to this edge here, but you're not going to see the indentation that you would see if it was one of those other printmaking processes. And as I mentioned before, there's no dot matrix pattern. So if we see the dot matrix pattern, that's a dead giveaway that it is a later reproduction. Um, and like I said, the reproduction ones are gonna be smaller in size almost always, except unless they're a, a new edition. So on the ones, especially from the Treasury of American prints, they will have a clean cut edge and I have to do say that some of the original stone lithographs have had their margins trimmed because um, historically when they were framed like in the, you know, the 40s, the 50s, the 60s, they didn't um, care so much about keeping the margins pristine. And so a lot of them have come into us already trimmed. And so those two particular pieces don't usually hold as much value as one that has the full margins because um, most of the collectors will want to see the, the full entire thing not being trimmed. The ones from the Treasury of American Prints are smaller in size. So when the piece comes in, we're always comparing the, the, the size of the two pieces of what an uh, authentic one will be versus what the size of the piece is brought in. Um, and dot matrix patterns, like I said, are a dead giveaway. Dot matrix printing started around 1925. And so any, that was the offset lithograph is what that term is called. And that was very common up until the digital print was begin in like the late 80s and 90s. Uh, the digital prints are going to look too new. So when we look at the age of the paper. A lot of times you'll see the like on this particular one, um, the background, the paper margins are going to be darker. Um, it's going to be a cheaper paper on these pieces uh, and the digital prints are going to just look too new. And so we compare that. Um, and the ones that are in the American Tre Treasury of American 
the Treasury of American prints have the print information on the back. So if you see that, then we also know that it's not going to be an authentic print. Um, so I'm going to stop the screen share for just a minute and show an example of one that is here in the gallery that uh, is a reproduction one. And actually, I'm going to put my gloves on because if we're handling prints, we should always have gloves to keep fingerprints and debris off. And then I have the stone lithograph here of the honorary degree. So if you compare the two pieces side by side, I have to back up here a little bit, um, there is gonna be a size difference in them. And this particular one, has repro in this corner. It's gonna be a little hard to see with the, the screen, but that's also a, a giveaway. And as we open it up, you can see that it's been taken from the binder where it has the rippled edges there. Um, and then the margins are gonna be a clean cut. This particular one has you know darker on the edges um, because of the, just the nature of the, the printing um, and the age of the piece. So these particular pieces are gonna be printed with a cheaper um, wood pulp based paper and the other ones are going to be you know a nicer a nicer paper that they used so this particular one is one of the the real authentic ones um, as you can see in the corner it has his pencil signature but it does not have repro on the other side and as you open it up they'll have a little bit different margins on there um, this particular one is full margins it's hinged at the top um, and you can see that there's gonna be a very subtle decal on the edge of these pieces, whereas the other ones are gonna be a, a straight cut. And typically the um, original ones are gonna be a little bit more um, darker on the, in the printing. The other one's gonna feel a little bit more faded out. So like I said, we look for the size difference. We look for the type of paper that's used, um, the dot matrix pattern, how the signature is, and those are all clues that we look for when we're trying to determine if it's an original print or not original print. Um, let me go back to my screen share. So when we look at things that affect the, the value of a print, so say, okay, we've determined that we've got an original print here. Um, some of the different things are, like I said before, are if it's the full margin or if it's trimmed, um, that will have a, a definite determination of the value. Um, the condition of the print, um, a lot of times you'll find things like foxing, which is uh, imperfections in the paper. It's gonna be, you know, issues with mold that's happened and it creates these reddish dark spots on them. Um, so those are things that will take away from the value of the piece. There will be staining sometimes from past hinges. Sometimes you'll have lots of tape that's taped all the way around or taped at the top um, from how it had been framed before. That can also take away from the value of the piece. We look for if there's sun damage, if there's a matte burn, um, if there's you know, had non-archival matting or backing, because when these were usually originally framed in the 40s, 50s, 60s, archival wasn't even a thing of consideration at that time because that wasn't really developed until later. And so a lot of them will have issues from um, past framing. So we take a look at all those. We look at if there's any tears, dents from um, mishandling, um, other things that would um, take away the value of the piece. And there's also, you know, certain prints are more desired than others. So there's the rarity, like I said, with the Sultry Knight, that one's a more rare piece. Um, since there's less of them there, it's going to be higher in value. The popularity of the piece, the landscapes tend to be more popular than the, the other ones. Um, family doctors, uh, you know, a lot of people like that particular one because it has Grant Wood in there. Um, but Midnight Alarm might not be as popular as some of the other ones. So there's going to be categories of the ones that are valued higher than others just by the nature of the, the image. Um, and on the condition of the, some of the things, we found that, you know, sometimes we can send them off to conservators and they can take away the staining, they can take away the old. Um, tape residue, they can um, fix the foxing issues. Uh, so a lot of times we will have a piece sent off to a couple conservators that we work with um, that can uh, repair some of those damage that has happened to the piece to prolong the life. 
and they can also do a, a thing where they can um, put in an alkaline reserve to prevent from the the assets creating damage in the piece. So um, when you're doing conservation work, we'll um, consider all those different options in there. And then we always recommend is your if you're if it has non-archival mats and backing and glass, then to reframe it with you know archival matting. Rag mats are great. Um, cotton rag mats because they won't have acids in them. Um, archival backing, UV protected glass. Uh, all of those will think will help to preserve the life of your prints. And then, um, yeah, like I said, we work with a, a couple different conservators uh, to um, fix pieces that have damage over the time. A couple of good resources that we work with on identifying the different ones. Uh, one of which is Sylvan, well, this one here is the Bruce Johnson catalog prints. So this one has um, lots of information on them. The dates, it will have the sizes of the, the image size that we're looking for. They don't have necessarily the paper size on there, but um, Lisa has like the image size to compare. Um, Sylvan Cole's catalog resume is an earlier one. This is a great res resource as well. Um, this one here, I don't have the, the actual book, but it, it's available as a digital download. And so that's great. Um, and of course there's always like lots of other Grant Wood books. Like this one here is Dennis's Grant Wood book. Got a post note on the front. Um, that's a great resource. We use these a lot. And, you know, obviously you're not going to have these works in your library, um, for the most part, but, you know, you can go to, you know, the Cedar Rapids Public Library, the Cedar Rapids Museum would have them in their libraries. A lot of these are available to, um, see online. Um, so you can use some of those reference, uh, references to help find things uh, as far as like comparing sizes and such. And... That is kind of the end of my little talk today. I was going to see if there was any questions anyone had. Well, I know that was really helpful for me. We run into that. We run into those prints all the time. And so I, I knew some of those things, but I did not know all of them, which was fascinating. No. So. You know, we get a lot of questions on, oh, I found this, I found that. And some people get really excited thinking, oh, I've got a real one. And then we're like, you know, once we look at it a little more carefully, uh, it's like, sorry, it's not. Um, and like some of the, like the ones from the Treasure of American Prints, I mean, they're as low as like $6 on eBay. And so, but I also saw some when I was looking at this last night that some of those are going for like 150. So it's a crazy amount on uh, the difference on, on what people are looking to ask for those prints, so. That is wild. Do you see kind of one variety of reproduction more than the other? Like, do you see the Treasury of American Prints one more than modern ones or? Usually, yeah. Usually um, those, one time you'll see some, you know, some mid-century ones. We don't see a lot of the more recent ones, the more modern prints. Um, I think just because those are a dead giveaway, they don't look as yeah. old as the other ones. So, but the ones from the um, Thomas Craven's book, that one is the, the one we see the most often. Interesting. Yeah. But a lot of the ones that are from like mid-century that were like maybe the WNT edition ones, they don't have repro on them because um, mm -hmm. obviously that's a dead giveaway. But uh, so we just always have to double check. Sure. Yeah. Susie, I have a question if I may jump sure. in here. Um, I It's been a long time since I've looked at the Thomas Craven um, uh, Treasury of American prints. Is every one of Grant Wood's prints included in that book, or is it just yeah. a certain subset? Just a few of them. Let me grab the book here. Honorary degree is one of them because I took it out of there <laughs> for the demonstration today. Um, Shriners Quartet is in there, January, Seed Time and Harvest. And I think that's about it. There's only just a handful in there. And so July the 15th is another one. Um, so those are the only ones that are in there. Um, but I know that there are other reproductions that are out there as well. So of the other prints. So that there oh, is um, fewer uh, uh, prints in the Craven book uh, means that uh, those in particular, when you get one, uh, someone approaching you with one of those, um, uh, 
one possibility is Craven. One possibility is that it's a more modern print right. uh, at the same time. Um, but outside of those, are the chances then more likely that somebody might have an original um, if it's not in the Craven book? Or has everything, have all of his prints been reproduced to a great degree? I think they've all been, I haven't done a, I haven't seen them all come through, but I think most of them, I think when w &T did their calendar and did their advertising in the mid-century 60s, um, I think they did most of the prints on those. Um, I've seen the hand-colored ones as placemats of all kinds of different things. I mean, they've been, and those are like not new placemats, they're older placemats. Um, but obviously, you know, who's going to take a print and make a placemat out of it? Um, but, but I think w &T did quite a bit of um, reproduction of those with their marketing such. And so I, the other ones must usually come from there, I believe. So, and those particular ones don't have any information on the back, like the Craven ones. And so those are the ones that we always have to double check on the size. And they tend to be smaller, you were saying? Yeah, they're all, they're almost, yeah. uh, almost completely there, you know, it's gonna be a size difference. So mm -hmm. I think that's one of the things when they did reproduce them, uh, they couldn't have them at the same size. And the paper is going to be a lot, um, lot cheaper. It's going to be a wood pulp paper. It's not going to be as nice in the paper that the original ones are done on. Okay. So, yeah. And of course, you're not going to be able to tell the paper until it's out of the matting. That's why we usually recommend taking it apart, you know, so you can see it with the full margins and see what's going on with the edges of the paper. So, sure. But measuring is always a good first step. I feel like I'm all set to see some more reproductions now. <laughs> now I want them to come in so I can, so I can determine what they are. Exactly, so you can be tested on it. So yeah, it's always it's always interesting. We, we get a lot of calls on you know bringing those things in, and so we're happy to take them apart just to double check on things. Um, so that's how we know for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, certainly a number of those are probably from people that I've steered your way over the probably. years, and that's always <laughs> yes. <laughs> Any other questions from anyone? If somebody does have uh, an original, what is the most that you have seen one of his prints go for it, I say at auction? At auction, the Sultry Night one, the risque one, um, was in the $20,000 range. And that one currently, I know there's one gallery in the Chicago area that's selling it for 30000 so that's the difference, you know, looking between auction selling price and what a retail gallery might mark, might mark it up to. Um, he didn't say if that was the one that he purchased, but that, you know, but, uh, but he, he lets me know that he still has it. So <laughs> we have a buyer. So, you know, and the auction values can range anywhere from, you know, a few thousand up to, you know, usually like mm, eight to 10. Um, gallery pricing on things will start, you know, anywhere from like 3000 up to 12000 for most of them, except for the sultry night, which is the more coveted one. So it's, you don't see those come up very often. So. Um, Susie, um, I have a question. If your gallery, do you do framing? Yes, yes, we do. Thank you. Any other brave souls with questions? <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much, Susie. I learned a ton, so I'm very excited. That was wonderful. So happy you could share your expertise with us. Well, thanks for having me today. Absolutely. Thank you so much, and good to see everyone. Everyone, thank Have you. Have a lovely rest of your day. Thanks. Bye, guys. <laughs>